Guys, what's going on? Welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath, and it is time for another Spotlight on Warner Archive. In this video, we are going to talk about some of the newest, latest, hottest releases from Warner Archive, but I also want to make a case, since this is our Halloween Spectacular Spotlight on Warner Archive, this is a Halloween-themed, horror-themed video, uh, I want to make a case. I want to explain to you why, in my opinion, Warner Archive wins Halloween this year. These three releases uh, have come throughout the month of October. Each week for the first three weeks of October, Warner Archive has dropped a new, new to Blu-ray horror movie from the Warner Archives. And these are very sought after. These are fan favorites. These are fan requested. So we have the first week of October, we got From Beyond the Grave, an amicus anthology starring Peter Cushing, Donald Pleasance, David Warner. It's so nice to have this on Blu-ray. Then the next week we got The Fearless Vampire Killers. This is one of the most requested uh, cult favorites that I can think of. It's so, it's just amazing to have this on Blu-ray. Two words, Sharon Tate. And then last, but certainly not least, the third week of October, we got Don't Be Afraid of the Dark, which was a telefilm from the 70s. Those who saw it that night when it aired on television were seriously freaked out. This was the basis for a remake by uh, produced by Guillermo del Toro. But uh, these three releases, for me, you know, there's a lot of competition during October. There's a lot of people trying to compete for our buying, our, our buying dollar for my money. These three do win Halloween. I cannot tell you how exciting it has been to know that each week of the month there was a new horror movie that was hitting my mailbox. Um, and the excitement, the anticipation, knowing, oh, it's the Amicus Day. You get to watch the new Amicus movie. And then, like every one of these, as soon as I, like, I come to the mailbox, I rip the shrink wrap off into the Blu-ray player. It's been such a fun experience to have this. And I hope that they do something like this next year, but you know what? I'm not going to, I'm just going to be grateful for what we have right now. I had this experience, three new movies all throughout October. Let's go through them just a little bit one by one. I, I have things to say. So from beyond the grave is, a, as I said, it's an amicus anthology film. Uh, amicus was known for their portmanteau films, which were, you know, anthology stories, different, they would be, um, you know, different stories, short subjects, kind of tales from the crypt style with connective tissue. And in this case, the connective tissue is Peter Cushing. And I love Peter Cushing. You, you watching this channel, you probably know my crazy affection for Peter Cushing. I think he's just the best. He's one of my all-time favorites, along with Mr. Price. And uh, it's it's a really cool anthology. You know, we all, I think most people that watch anthology movies tend to prefer one or two stories over the whole thing. We pick our favorites, but what's cool is that those favorites are not always the same. We all have our individual tastes. Uh, but I really enjoyed watching this one. And one of the things that I commend Warner Archive for is they almost always include the original poster art. They really shine a light on that original art. And so from beyond the grave, look at this. This is amazing artwork. Hopefully you guys can see it. So I think it's maybe better lit over here. Um, this is the original art that was used to promote this film in the 70s. 1973, I believe. Yeah, 1973. Isn't that stunning? This is, it's worth it just for the box art alone. This, if this was peaking, those of us who grew up in the video store days know the importance of like what a great cover like this will do as you're just browsing shelf after shelf of tapes, you know, VHS tapes or DVDs. This is stunning. So it's nice to have another amicus, um, another amicus film on Blu-ray that we can check off of the, the horror collector's list. Because there's, there's only so many Amicus movies. You know, they were a competitor of Hammer, Hammer Horror. And for a few years there, for maybe about a decade, they were really serious competition as an English studio that was helmed by Americans, interestingly enough. But uh, an English studio that really competed with Hammer for the, uh, the buying dollars, the box office dollars of, of um, moviegoers. So there's only a certain number of them, and this is another one off the list. Next, The Fearless Vampire Killers. This movie, <laughs> some of you know, some of you have seen this, and some of you know, this is a, it's crazy. So it's kind of a satire of vampire movies, but it's also a very effective vampire movie in and of itself. One of the, the thing that I think it exceeds the most at, um, succeeds the most at, is it's, 
atmosphere and it's directed by roman polanski uh and he's also in the movie here i think on the back you can really get a good look at roman polanski uh sharon tate who would be his wife before the whole you know it's all legend now it's, it's not legend it's 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 iconic for sure the whole manson family murders the subject of uh well kind of sort of the subject of uh of once upon a time in hollywood with a with a big old twist but um i think a lot of us love sharon tate this is one of those movies there's so few movies that she's actually in this is one of them and it's so nice to have this but the movie really succeeds on its atmosphere it is very gothic it's shot in an actual castle it takes place in the snow it's a unique movie and it's it is funny it does have a lot of satire behind it but i don't know that it's laugh out loud funny it's kind of that monty python very clever very thoughtful observational comedy that monty python would do where they just kind of twist expectations they just kind of turn things on their head in a way that only really smart comedy can do and this movie is like that there's a lot of tropes a lot of vampire cliches and traditions that uh, really get kind of played with turned on their heads here but it, it, so it plays as both kind of a light-hearted movie which is not super light-hearted it's still very creepy and an atmospheric uh legitimately wonderful vampire movie so i highly recommend this if you haven't seen it it does carry over the special features from the dvd which we have here in the serial at midnight studios thanks to lee we actually unboxed that unboxed that in a mail video uh, some months ago, but Lee sent us the DVD for this. All the DVD extras are carried over here. So we have a vintage making of feature at the vent, uh, the Fearless Vampire Killers, Vampires 101, which is another tongue-in-cheek, very comical, um, kind of behind-the-scenes thing. It, it, it apparently showed in theaters. It's not like it was made for a DVD or VHS or anything like that. It's theatrical in nature. So it was used to promote the movie. Uh, and then, of course, the theatrical trailer, which in itself is a lot of fun. So this is another one made my Halloween. So nice to have that in HD. And then last, but certainly not least, of the three horror movies is Don't Be Afraid of the Dark. And I mentioned that this was the inspiration for the remake that was produced by Guillermo del Toro, starred Katie Holmes and Guy Pierce. Um, I, I don't know how this one has aged for people that are younger than me, <laughs> but I, I can say, like, I can look at this and see how scary this would have been in 1973 when it aired on television. Frank, frankly, the creatures, as you can see here, the, the little monsters, they're like little gremlins before there were, before Joe Dante's gremlins. These little creatures live in this house. This, this couple moves into this house. They inherit this house. They move in and these little monsters are in the house and they're, they want her. They want the, the wife. They want her soul. And there's like a, an abandoned room with a walled up fireplace. And it's kind of just like this, this woman's descent into madness. The woman, I should say, is played by Kim Darby from most probably most commonly known as the, the young girl in the original True Grit, the John Wayne version of True Grit, that classic film. Um, and it is, uh, it, it's really, really cool for a 1973 TV movie. This one has special features as well. It has a new commentary by Amanda Reyes um, and an audio commentary by Steve Uncle Creepy Barton. And the, Oh, I'm sorry. Steve Uncle Creepy Barton from Dread Central. Screenwriter Jeffrey Reddick, Final Destination, Day of the Dead, and Sean Abley from Fangoria. The, uh, the commentary by Amanda Reyes, which I listened to, is she literally wrote the book on telemovies, TV movies. She has written a book about the TV movie from its, like, the heyday through the 70s and the 80s, all the way up to kind of the demise of the TV movie. Uh, but she clearly knows a lot about what she's talking about. It's a very informative track, and this movie is a lot of fun, too. I think, like I said, I think those who experience this, I still hear horror stories from people who saw this and got really, really freaked out, because in this movie, the terror is in your home, and you do not have to go to the theater to see this. You didn't have to go. Of course, this is 1973, so there were no video stores. There was only the theater. Uh, this was in your house. This horror was in your house, and I think that that was really... Uh, it really affected people. And this is just another piece of movie history added to our shelves because of Warner Archive, and I'm so grateful for that. Similarly, not, not released during October, but similar since the last time we talked, since the last time we did a Warner Archive spotlight, we've picked up, they've released V, the original miniseries, the original 1983 miniseries, and you know, V went on from there. But this is what started it all. And I think it's a good, it, it feels kind of, 
of the season of Halloween and of, of horror and things like that. Very sci-fi. There's actually a full review for this movie at, uh, at serial at midnight.com. I have done a full, uh, in-depth review on this. What makes it special, the special effects, the acting, everything about this movie that appeals to me or this mini series. I should say that appeals to me. This is a wonderful release. It looks so good. It is in its original. So this was shot in, uh, Kenneth Johnson, the writer, director, producer, <laughs> it is like the jack of all trades, Kenneth Johnson, shot this um, in kind of a widescreen format, thinking that maybe it would get a theatrical distribution, like sometimes they would cut these things down. This was a TV movie, you know, TV miniseries in the US. Sometimes these things would get cut, cut down, and then released in overseas markets as movies. Battlestar Galactica did this. It happened. I think Buck Rogers as well, Buck Rogers in the 25th century. Um, but he shot it in a theater-friendly format, and then for television, it was kind of masked and cropped. Not cropped, but it was kind of masked off, matted, so that it could be display in the, the 4x3 TV image. So, this is the original widescreen 35mm film HD presentation. It looks like a million bucks. It, it looks really good. So, this is uh, another one that we're just really excited to have. And then, uh, of course, since we last talked, Warner Archive has released Action Jackson, the um the the superstar vehicle for carl weathers uh you know you may know him as apollo creed <laughs> the the original the classic predator carl weathers is the man one of the most good jealously good looking just jealous about how good looking carl weathers is jack to the nines you know that bodybuilder <laughs> this is this is a carl weathers vehicle this is action jackson what year does this come from 89 88 action jackson action jackson is 1988 uh, I believe that this had previously been issued and gone out of print. It is now back in print, so there's no need to pay exorbitant prices on eBay or on the internet. Action, ja action, <laughs> action Jackson is back in print thanks to Warner Archive. So this is another one that we absolutely love, that kind of cinema that we just, yes, celebrate. And then last but certainly not least, I want to talk about Moonfleet, which is also recently released from Warner Archive. This is a... Uh, 1955, um, I'm going to call it an adventure movie in the vein of a kidnapped Treasure Island. If you've seen those movies, those Robert Louis Stevenson stories, it's a young boy who ends up on this adventure far bigger than he is, life and death, buccaneering, smuggling. It does take place um, kind of at sea. And the, the cool thing about this movie is that it's directed by Fritz Lang. The very same Fritz Lang who directed Metropolis in the 20s, who directed some of the greatest film noirs of the entire noir era. Uh, Fritz Lang is an icon in cinema. And it's interesting that he would go on to things like this. You know, we associate some of these directors with these huge like metropolis right like it founded a genre it's one of the first science fiction movies it's one c3po from star wars is kind of patterned after a character from metropolis like these these movies have such huge looming uh reputations legacies and then here he is directing kind of a swashbuckling adventure in the 50s it's just interesting how they would continue to adapt to whatever the Hollywood system was uh, was doing. You know, by this time, the noir movement was kind of dying down. It was on its way out. But still, his contributions to noir are um, incomparable. So we continue to champion Warner Archive for these releases. I should also mention, it, it still continues to come up all the time. Warner Archive, burned or pressed, every Warner Archive Blu-ray, not necessarily so with the DVDs, but every Blu-ray from Warner Archive is pressed. It is factory pressed. It's not, it's not burned on demand. Uh, it is a, it, just like you would buy in the store. And now, do not quote me on this. Do some research yourself, but up to this point, all Warner Archive titles have been region free as well. Now, as soon as I say this, I don't want you to import something and they've changed the system. But the like the breadth of Warner Archive titles are region free. So if you're concerned about it, check online. Look up, you know, you can, there are places you can go. There are resources you can go look to see uh, what other regions have tried them and if they play. But I'm letting you know, up to this point, every Warner Archive release plays worldwide. So. Guys, Warner Archive, for me, wins Halloween. These are so 
um, valuable in my collection. I, I really do cherish these. I, I'm so grateful that Warner Arc, I mean, they've been on fire lately. I mean, they have been on fire. The animation stuff, Johnny Quest, The Jetsons, these three horror movies, the, the slate for November looks amazing. Uh, follow them on Facebook, and we promote as much of the news as we can through the Serial at Midnight channels. So uh, they are doing incredible, incredible work. Guys, thanks for hanging out, talking about these Halloween-timed and themed releases from Warner Archive. Have you seen them? Have you picked them up? What did you think about them? Guys, let's continue the conversation in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video for your time. We appreciate you very much. Take care, and until next time, have a happy Halloween, and we will catch you later.